Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas. This is Craig Burley. Shaka Hislop is back. The band are back together. What Thanks a show. Thanks very much. What a show we Thanks have. Thanks well, very what? much for bothering your backside. Clearly Come missed back. us. I this is, this exactly. is how Craig says, I've missed yeah, you guys yeah. so saying, much. Oh, I've carried the whole show. Oh, oh, oh yeah, we're two we're weeks. <laughs> Two weeks we've carried the show oh. through illness and sickness, and I walk in here, and first thing these two said to me, oh, we're not feeling well. <laughs> I don't care. Neither do the people at home. Well, we haven't told them. Well, we have You've told them now. Uh, meanwhile, in our absence, Bayern Munich have been an absolute disaster, and then some. Thomas Tuchel, though, defending his side after that defeat against Bochum at the weekend. If you ask me if I firmly still believe me and the coaching staff can turn things around, yes. Something we never stop, never stop trying. If we play this game five more times, we win it five times. I don't blame the players today. That's nice, nice for them. Uh, meanwhile, this is what Jan Christian Dressen had to say, the Bayern Munich CEO. I'm not a fan of monstrous coach backing statements. They usually run out after a week. <laughs> but Tuchel's future is not an issue we are dealing with at the moment. We have to focus on our next matches. Uh, for more on this, we welcome in the one and only Mario Malkiot's with us. But Jan, I want to start with you. Why have we seen Bayern so happy to sack managers in the past for a lot less and not pull the trigger this time on Tuchel, considering the absolute disaster it has been? I think that Julian Nagelsmann is actually saving Thomas Tuchel at the moment because they saw the last season, it didn't help, did it? They uh, wanted to make a fresh new young coach, uh, create, uh, develop a new young Bayern team, didn't succeed, and then they had to take Tuchel. They fired Nagelsmann, and none player, none player has got better since Tuchel came. And you know I'm a big fan of Thomas Tuchel. I've always been, I always rated his work. But we, we, we have to look at the fact at the moment. And, and, I, and he is pushing my support when he starts with XG to explain <laughs> the loss uh, uh, at, the, at the last game in Bochum. Yes, they created chances. But if you have a look at the game, and as I did, and I've seen the highlights again just before I came on now, there is a big, big difference between the two teams because Bochum were desperate to win the game. They were desperate to win the tackles. Bayern Munich, what did they do? No passion, no energy, no intensity. And after the game, they were fighting. Joshua Kimmich had a go at the assistant coach and so on and so on. And Tuchel, well, he got the support from Jan Dresden. But I think the key words here, at the moment, I think that is the key key thing now. And now every coach in the whole world is linked to, to Bayern Munich. So is, this is to be continued. Has he got a point, though, Greg? If Harry Kane scores that second opportunity yeah, to make no, it to... Well, let me not go down if my auntie was my uncle. Sorry, we know, we know the <laughs> no, scenario. definitely not. We know the scenario there. <laughs> Listen, if all the players have got worse... Oh, no, if all the players... Well, they have, really. They've, they're defending poorer, the midfield's worse. And Harry Kane's had a great season up until, I don't know, Jan will know better than me, two or three weeks ago at least. Let's say up until Christmas. Uh, and it seems to have gone a bit flat for him. You might, I mean, you might as well sack him now, unless they think there is going to be a turnaround, an immediate turnaround. And you might say, well, who are they going to bring in? Well, what's going to be worse? The chances are, you know, they could go out against Lazio. It's an even stronger chance they're not going to win the Bundesliga. They're already out the Poco. Uh, so what, what's the point in waiting? Maybe they think there's going to be a drastic change. But look... He's ostracised so many players over the course of his time there. Uh, Kimmich, Goretzka, they've all not played particularly well. Uh, Apomecano, who is red card city at the moment. Matthias De Litt, uh, who was in the side, out the side. Couldn't get in when he played three at the back. Then he was back in. All these players, and I've said this relentlessly for, for the last couple of weeks, he's having to go back to the well and beg guys that know he really doesn't want them in the team, and he's asking them basically to save his job. Now, players will be professional, or they should be, but it, it's difficult when in the back of your mind, your subconscious is saying, you know what, I, I, I want to go out there, I want to play, but deep down, this guy, he, he doesn't really want me here. He doesn't, he doesn't rape me. And he's not got one of those, he's not got two of the, those, he's probably got three, four or five, and you can maybe add Leroy Zane to that list now yeah. as well, after his recent form. And, of course, Harry Kane hasn't been, been sparkling either. So, you know, 
Are they waiting for a Lazio draw or defeat? What, what are they waiting? They're waiting in Leverkusen well, to get that, 10 yeah, points to, ahead? To that point, Craig, uh, to Craig's point, Jan, they've got Leipzig coming up, then they've got Freiburg, and then it's the Lazio game. As Craig said, why not make the change now? You've got a couple of games to warm up for that big clash against Lazio, because, let's face it, the Champions League is pretty much your only hope now of a trophy this season. Yes, but, but what I started out, I think Bayern Munich want, don't, doesn't want to be the club they are firing coaches all the time. Uh, there are only three, four coaches being Hitzfeld and Heinkes and Latek who can only take this team on, it seems. Uh, and they don't want to be that club. They want to change that attitude of the club. Yes, Craig got a point. Why don't they do it now? But, I mean, we see all, all over the place that will it change that much? They saw last season it didn't change that much when Tuchel came on. The problem is for them now is uh, is touching a bit, uh, Craig. Uh, at the moment, you have you could add also Thomas Müller to that thing. Thomas Müller is fantastic outside the field, great interviews on the pitch, not delivering. Muziala, one of the greatest talent the world got at the moment. We don't see anything of it. Harry Kane came one against one against the goalkeeper. Thomas Müller, all on his own, in front of goal, didn't play him. I'm not saying he should have, because he's the best finisher maybe in the world. But still, these are things that is happening. But what we do know about Bayern is that they won't plan any firing, but they can just do it from one day to another. I would just give an advice to Thomas Tuchel. Don't go on a ski holiday. <laughs> yes, it's very true. Mario, <laughs> what was interesting in this game, that Bayern started well, and yeah. then the tennis balls came down, and that just seemed to end any sort of momentum that Bayern had. And what, what, what's interesting, watching from the outside in, is, as, as Jan said, there was no drive, there was no passion in that second half to try and get things back on track. And this is so, so instrumental, because when you talk about passion and drive, look at there was a moment, you understand, where Kimi came in the middle with, to win the ball back, and I think that is the moment when they conceded the goal. And he had a moment yes. to put his foot in and tackle. And he just jumped out. And I was like, I was watching the game. I was like, well, you understand? Like, this is a moment when you as a midfielder can also show your team what direction you want them to go. I know that, you know, the news came out that he had the ups and downs with the coach and he also had some moments. But, you know, put everything in the game. And then going back, you understand, what you guys talked about, Musiala. The sad part is when you're that talented and they put so much uh, focus on you, it's, it becomes difficult. It's, it's almost like we have talked about uh, in the Premier League, enough clubs have that situation too. It's not that the young boys always have to take all the responsibility. It's the guys with so much experience. And Musiala came up with the goal, but I feel like you highlighted Kane already that he missed uh, some opportunities. But I feel like, no, the pressure should not be on the kid. The kid should be protected in the sense of because he's that talented, and I feel like, uh, of course, I want to see a good football from him. But come on, guys, this is a team. We're talking about Bayern. Eh? This is one of the greatest teams in Germany. I live in Holland for so long. And the only thing I could hear was Bayern Dortmund, Bayern Dortmund. So come on, if, I, if I'm going to talk about <laughs> that, they've got to fix that situation really quickly because it's not looking good. But here's the thing. Bayern Munich have dug this hole for themselves. Over the last couple of years, it feels as though the political side of this football club has taken on more prominence than the footballing side of the football club. The sacking of Nagelsmann was, was politically motivated and Dortmund came and, and did all of them a huge favour on the last day. Leverkusen don't, are showing no signs of, of, of doing the exact same. So to your question, Dan, the reason Tuchel hasn't been sacked yet is because everybody sitting in, in those upper boardrooms are desperate for things to turn around. Right. Somehow, <laughs> anyhow, because it all looks... It, it, if, it, if things don't, it makes the sacking of Nagelsmann look, look awful. It makes the hiring of, of, of Tuchel look <laughs> awful. It makes them and the job that they're doing and the decisions that they've made look all, all the worse for it. Nobody, nobody's going to give the kind of favours that, that Dortmund did last time around. So now, as of right now, I'm, I'm not sure what tree those, you know, those higher-ups are, are, are barking up. Because it's, it's just getting worse and worse. And, and to that point, more and more embarrassing when you, when you hear the post-game comments and, and all the rhetoric right, around it. Bayern don't want to be this <laughs> club now and they want to be something different and they don't, yeah. want to, they don't want to feel embarrassed because they don't want one bad decision after another. And they're not going to do anything now. 
Potentially. They might, they might, but they might not. What do they do at the end of the season then? When they haven't won the Champions League and, and, and they won't. Uh, and when they haven't won the Bundesliga, which looks unlikely, what do they do then? then? Yeah, and do they then make the change? Because they either want to be this club that's hiring and firing, or they want to be this club that says, OK, if we haven't won the Bundesliga for the first time in, what, 11 years or whatever it is, but we're not going to make these drastic changes and we're going to stick with our manager and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to uh, take the criticism that comes away, but we're going to make good decisions and go forward. They probably won't do that either. So what, what it, one is it? Are they sacking him now or are they sacking him at the end of the season? I think that what you've seen, the last three coaches, first was Flick, who left for Germany, but it was also, a, you remember, he had a fight with Salahamidzic. Then they fired Salahamidzic and Oliver Kahn. In comes Julian Nagelsmann to build a young empire. He was uh, branded as Alexander the Great, the young king who should make the kingdom of of Bayern so calm and developing and everything, and he was fired. Then Tuchel was, uh, is there and is in danger of being fired. To, to Shaka's point, who should do it because they will lose face? I think there is a solution just down the road. Because what they have now have done, they have, they're getting a new head of sport in. Max Ebel, as we knew from, or, or we know from Gladbach and Leipzig, he is coming in. I can see a scenario now with the three games coming up now that Max Ebel must be the guy who's doing it because he doesn't have any history at the club. He hasn't done anything with Nagelsmann. He hasn't done anything with Tuchel either. So he can come in and just say, well, you know, I have had a look. I've evaluated the situation. I will let him go. So he can end up being the head of sport. The first thing you've got to do is to fire the manager. Yeah. But you I, know what? I, I, I have a feeling too, eh? when I watch him sitting on the bench, um, Tuko, it almost gives me a feeling that he's waiting for something. He, 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 in the back of his mind, it looked to me yeah, like, yes, he, even when I was watching the game, there was a moment when he, uh, Makano, he brought him on and he went to the touchline, talking to him while he's jumping and warming up, telling him exactly what he, what he wants him to do and goes back to his bench. And I'm looking at a man and saying like, he's doing a lot of things that he normally would not be doing. And I, I, that's during the game. And then the way he sits on the bench, when I look at him, it looks like, it's almost like someone saying to me, like, I know what's about to happen. And knowing that all the experience that he had, I felt like PSG was the perfect place for him to learn how to deal with top stars. Because I felt like that was the ultimate place. When you go there, you know exactly you're dealing with the highest level of stars. You know, with a Messi, a Neymar, a Mbappe. Then you come to Chelsea and you see something happening there. Okay, I don't think that stars were at that size. But then, going to Bayern, this is the club, okay, so much connection for him also, also the German side. And I feel yeah. like, at this point, the connection is so strong for him. And I don't know if he is emotionally, you understand, ready to, to make that shift in, in, in his job, in the sense of, like, what this club really needs. And I don't know if he's ready for that, because as a skill, like what Dan, what Dan just, um, uh, what Jan just said, I, I liked his work too. When he left Chelsea, I was like, why? You understand? Give the man some more time. But now I'm looking at him at Bayern and I'm asking myself, why does he need to make this team work? Because the talent is in the team. And maybe they, okay, maybe they have to renew the team, but still there's enough talent for him not to be in this situation where he's in now. This but, is damaged his stock, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. I don't think there's any doubt. And there were some rumours when you, you two boys were, were, were away that... that some of his management, well, true or not, I don't know. Allegedly, some of his management were, were sort of uh, trying to sell him to Barcelona. Uh, whether that's any truth from that or not, <laughs> I think they, I think they realise that he's not, that his numbers up at Bayern. Listen, if I was to sit here and say uh, Thomas Tuchel is not a good coach, that would be factually incorrect because he's had success, mm -hmm. and I would never sit here and say that. But, but let me tell you, I, I, I have never really been in love with any of his sides. Not saying they haven't been successful, and they have to an extent. PSG, you kind of expect it, certainly domestically. Chelsea, there was the, the Champions League and, and whatnot. But I've never, I've never, whenever Tuchel's been going somewhere who's going to buy and I've gone, that's going to be fast, pacey, you know, dynamic football. I've never really, for all his success and his experience, I've never sat and went, wow, they're really going to be good to watch. And when you're not good to watch, and you're not getting results, it's even more of a problem. And, and, and that, that's where he is. Look, 
there is no easy answer. It looks to me, and Mario mentioned the maybe lack of commitment to challenges in the middle of the park. It looks to me <coughs> that he's tried to deal with these players in a certain way behind the scenes by dropping them, by not dropping mm -hmm. them, by talking to them in a manner in which he has or not. And we can agree whether these players should do better or not. But they're not pulling their weight for him. Mm. They're not. Yeah. And no, he got at both ends of the pitch, Jan, and I keep going back to this, who would not have taken the South Korean Kim and who would not have taken Harry Kane in the summer? Yeah. And you'd think, yeah. well, I can build the rest of this around it and I can get around any deficiencies in this team with some of these very, very good players. Last word on this to you, Jan. Yeah, I'm just thinking that former players, we're sitting here and we can always blame the manager when we didn't play well. And uh, we all know that at the end of the day, it's going to be the manager, the coach are going to be fired and the players will keep on playing. But if I think also we, we've been uh, together, boys, for some years now discussing German national team. We've discussed Bayern. And I think they've got to have a look at them that maybe a lot of the German players, and I take out the German players now because this is also the German national team, that maybe these players are well overestimated. And that is not only the blame of Tuchel because he hasn't been there that long. Kimmich Goreska, have they got better? No. Thomas Müller, has, has he got better? No. Leroy Sané, no. Not playing constant enough. And so on and so on. And I haven't even started with foreigners like Upa Meccano, uh, who is always in for, for uh, a mistake. So, yes, it will be down to the manager. It's his responsibility. But this downfall of the so-called German football star started before Thomas Tuchel came to Bayern Munich.